You wouldn't think it's possible. Last day of November, and I've still got caterpillars alive and eating my brassicas. <laughs> Okay, in all honesty, not much has changed really um, since the October one. I've been working a lot in the workshop. I've done a few different things. I did a kitchen, uh, some worktops for someone. I've done a few different commissions and orders um, woodworking wise. But a little bit has changed in the garden. So I thought we'd go have a wander around and uh, show you in the greenhouse to start with. And not much has changed in here. Got a few chili plants still alive. It's not really frosted much. And down here, you can see I put a bit of wood ash around stuff actually, probably rightly or wrongly, maybe a bit too much. But these are some of my winter greens. We've got some bok pak choy, we've got some lamb's lettuce, some spring onions, some rocket, and some chard. And they're slowly coming on. So we've got some pak choy over here by the shed actually. What lost a few of them? the pigeons and you can see um, so I put they're a bit holy and I put shallots either side of them so as soon as the I don't know if I, we'll get a crop from the pack choy but as soon as they're done the shallots can just have that bed then for the rest of the time and then obviously got our my beautiful patch of perennial kale but there is still some cabbage white You wouldn't think it's possible. Last day of November, and I've still got caterpillars alive and eating my brassicas. There we go. So, as you can see, so frost wise, it's had my runner beans now. So, I need to collect them up and dry them. And I've got my other ones drying underneath the pizza oven shelter. And, but you can see the nasturtiums are still doing really well. They're bigger than my apple trees. And what I've been doing is harvesting a handful of those and taking them to the chickens. And they've been really enjoying that. Down here, you can see my green manure crops are coming up. So I've got my broad beans are up. They're looking pretty good. Not broad beans, field beans are up. The clover has established in some places, which is really good. And down here, you can see the garlic's coming up. But you see these elephant garlics, and they look like ornamental bulbs shooting up. They're always such big cloves, so I'm looking forward to having that. And down here, so now, I think this next week, I'm going to harvest this. This is my Peruvian ground apple, Yacon, and the frost has had it, killed it off, and now it's time to harvest it before the rats do, and hopefully we'll get a good harvest from that. And then down in the polytunnel, we've still got tomatoes, and they're still ripening very slowly. Probably got enough for a soup again. So in the polytunnel, we'll turn this around. You see, I'm using it to store my outside woodworking devices. So it's got my spoon mule, my peening pony for my um, that me and my daughter made. You can see that one, and my shave horse there as well. And then just a saw horse that was chucked out in the rain. All just keeps a bit better in here. Um, but you can see, look. So this side I've not cleared out the tomatoes. Still got some tomatoes growing but then down below me so we've got some peas which i started in modules actually and planted out we've got some mustard greens and um, turnip greens down here we've got some chard and i know it's a bit late and you can see them they're about that kind of size but i'm figuring they'll romp away come a bit of warmer weather and a bit of longer days got some rocket the same and that was really purple before I put it in. It's already greened up. So it's doing it some good being in the ground. Here we've got some broad beans, um, some purple seeded broad beans. And down here, we've got some chard and I've put scattered in some peas, which are sprouting now as well. So we'll see how they all do. Should be all right. So yeah, one well, next job is to clear out all these tomato plants and then try and get some muck and stuff in and get ready for next year really um try to have some earlier earlier crops as well as just my tomatoes so we do through here and part of me feels really guilty about having these apples rotten on the floor obviously they put a bit of goodness back into the ground i would prefer my chickens to be here eating them 
obviously they're in for avian flu and um, so I have been collecting them and feeding them to the chickens which they really enjoy we've actually still got some apples on the tree so got some that hold really well so there's still a few russets left on the tree and uh, this one here is called Christmas Pippin and it annoys me that the birds there's plenty on the on the ground and the birds eat all the ones off the tree but I guess it's to do with predators and things but these are beautiful apples really really tasty you see me eating apple in the side of my mouth it's got, got broken teeth and this apple here is always a favorite of mine this holds on the tree until december yeah so about now and this is called winter banana and i don't know if you can see probably not on it there are it's got this yellow color kind of banana like and if you look it's got these ribs just like a banana so I think that's why it's called winter banana not because it tastes anything like a banana because it really doesn't it's a nice hard apple um, really enjoyable I'll take this back up and have it after my lunch so yeah other than that I don't think there's much going on around here that I've done uh, just trudging through the mud feeding the chickens the, the ducks have made their pen a mud bath. They're the little feathered pigs that they are. But other than that, yeah, I think that's that's the long and short of it. That's that's what we've been doing.